Positive heads out there. Thanks for tuning your beautiful brainwaves into another episode of the Positive Head Podcast, where we are firmly convinced that creating success and happiness is rooted in understanding the ultimate nature of reality and the fact that as human beings, we are all immensely powerful fractals of the one and only source consciousness which creates and animates all things. After years of exploring this awe-inspiring truth on this podcast, I'm super, super excited to announce that we are now going even deeper down the rabbit hole on the new late-night-style consciousness-elevating talk show called Optimistic, which features none other than you, the listeners. Optimistic is taped out of the epic, spaceship-esque, eight-bedroom property we call the Mystic Manor that myself and the rest of the Optimistic crew now navigate reality from in Venice Beach, California. And you are invited to come experience a Mystic Manor Immersion Week with us. During your week-long stay, you'll enjoy unique workshops, chef-prepared meals, one-on-one time coaching and consulting with me, and even co-creating magic with me as a guest on both Optimistic and an episode of the Positive Head Podcast. When I started this, my aim with these immersive retreats was to facilitate the ultimate spiritual upgrade and tune-up, so to speak, uh, for our guests while providing them with one of the most memorable experiences of their lives. And I'm happy to say that as of this recording, Every guest at the end of their trip so far has told me that they have had a profound and transformational experience at the Mystic Manor and that they definitely want to come back. All that being said, we only have a limited number of spots available between now and next July. And as of this recording, about half of those spots are already filled. So if there's any part of you that is screaming, yes, I want to come, I feel like I need to be there, go now and book a slot with me to discuss how we can put our heads together and make it happen at calendly.com forward slash talk with Brandon. I know for some people, there is also that little voice in their head saying, why not? You know, I can't get off work. I can't afford it and on and on and on. But, you know, really, Henry Ford, I think, said it best. Whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. And I'm confident that where there's a will, there's a way. And I'm personally committed to doing everything in my power, including discounts and payment plans to get you here if it is something that truly feels like a huge yes for you energetically and like you're meant to be here. Once again, the link to book time to discuss with me is calendly.com forward slash talk with Brandon. That's spelled C-A-L-E-N-D-L-Y dot com forward slash talk with Brandon. All one word, of course. And uh, yeah, book in some time and look forward to seeing you soon here at the Mystic Manor. All right, all you positive heads, on this week's Soul Share episode, I'm very excited to have my friend Diana Gia here with me on the show. Diana is a former Googler who has spent the past two years in Bali studying alternative forms of energy healing uh, with His Royal Highness, am I going to get this right, Jock Gade? Mm-hmm. She now oh I got it right yeah she now serves as an intuitive business strategist who helps conscious entrepreneurs create a living doing the work they love. Hey there, Diana, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm delighted to be here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. It's a delight to do it here in person. You know, a lot of times I'm doing um, interviews remotely. People will be all over the world, or you know, uh, I mean, every now and then it's in person like this. But I mm-hmm. prefer it this way. And yeah, um, it's yeah. one of the most exciting things about the new show optimistic you Mm -hmm. know it's all with a live audience and live you know i really you know there's no replacing the ability to be able to look someone in the eye when you're talking to them right so completely agree Mm -hmm. so let's start the same place i always start with a very predictable intro question uh and it is this okay you're in an elevator oh okay the woman next to you looks over says what's your passion you have 10 floors to answer what do you say i would say playing with the universe and seeing what arises Hmm. 
I think I like being surprised and I like learning. And whenever I have that attitude of playing, inevitably those two things happen. So yeah. <laughs> getting into the flow and play. Exactly. I mean, it's something I talk about constantly on the show. It's like, I don't quite, I don't quote the Bible often, but when I do, it's this verse. Lest you become like a child, you can't enter the kingdom of heaven. Oh. And that's what I believe we are doing. We're creating heaven on earth mm-hmm. right now. We're, as we awaken to the truth of who and what we actually are, mm-hmm. one with the source consciousness that cre- creates and animates all things. Like, okay, wh- how do you... How do you start playing with that, you know, um, that information in a way that serves you become childlike? Like Mm -hmm. it's a whole new world. It's a, it it truly, you know, our, our lives are meant to be joyous celebration. Not that there's not going to be any hardship or anything like that, but understanding that it's happening for you and not to you. Right. It's it's a big thing. Absolutely. And there's so much unlearning in that process of becoming a child again, I have to say. It's not just a basis of age. It's about... (laughs) <laughs> am I in the moment? Am I allowing things to be totally easier yeah. said than done sometimes? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I always say, you know, I'm a poster adult for childhood and uh, aging. Uh, you've been sold on growing old <laughs> mm. and unsubscribe to that chat. Like you don't need to, you know, aging uh, isn't optional, but growing old is, mm-hmm. I believe. So, okay, change the channel on that. Yeah, change the channel. So let's, um, let's, if you would, get, you have a pretty interesting story. Story. Um, oh, I'd love to hear, uh, you know, if you would give the listeners a little background backstory into, mm-hmm. you know, who you are. Sure. So I guess to start from the beginning, um, I'm born to two Chinese immigrants who came to this country wanting to have a better future for me. And because of that, I really focus a lot on, you know, getting to the right school, doing well and then getting a good job. And quite frankly, I think on, you know, on paper, it all looked really great, but on the inside, I was really miserable and struggling for a while. Um, went to University of Chicago, then I went to Google, and when you're at the happiest place to work, and you have this cognitive dissonance because your inside's not matching the outer reality, I would say that um, that was a really tough place to be. And truth be told, about six months into my job, I remember this moment of sitting in the doctor's office at Google, and we were talking about, hey, maybe you should try antidepressants. And to me at that point, I was like, oh my gosh, I have, I'm at this point where I really need help. Okay, let's do it. And that's really the beginning of my story was when I was a month into taking Zoloft and I had spontaneous internal bleeding and it was a near-death experience. Wow. Yeah, my insides exploded. And I think looking back, at least the story Whoa. I'm painting for myself is that I was really suppressing my inner truth and my power. And my body was rebelling. Right. And I think when you have an experience when you can go to the other side and you realize, wow, we are all just love. Mm. And we're coming from a place of complete acceptance and belonging. Did you have an other side experience during that whole affair? Yes. Really? But it wasn't scary at all. Death is not scary. At least it wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. It felt like returning back to what is. It felt like home. Yeah. That's what is pretty much the consensus. Oh, yeah? I mean... I'm sure there's a little bit of everything out there, but yeah, I've heard that, you know, said more times than not when mm-hmm. it comes to near death experiences. Like, oh my gosh, or people that come back and are even depressed when they come back because <laughs> they, you know, got a taste of home, quote unquote home, and mm-hmm. they are just like, oh my gosh, I got to be back in this dense physical body. Kind exactly, of with limitations. But the great thing is, and what's true, that I believe in this, is that we have free will. And so I had the choice to come back. And coming back, knowing what I know now, I'm deciding to make the most of it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Welcome back. Thank you so much. We're glad you made it. Thanks. Me too. (laughs) But um, yeah, post Google, went and did a bunch of things in, I guess, the entrepreneurial space. And then I think my conditioning came back of wanting to meet parental expectations. I went back to Google. (laughs) I Mm -hmm. relapsed. Google relapse? Google relapse. Yeah, that happened. And... I think the universe intervened and I was fired in my job after our product launch. And that's when um, I was catalyzed into really making a change for the better. And I went to Mount Shasta, had very intense um, visions of Bali, a place I thought was for vacation. I'd never been there and no friends there. But within a week, I gave my things away and I moved there. Wow. You were, yeah. you, because of visions that you received of it, uh, uh, about Bali. Not only visions, but like a deep knowing that's where my next place needs to be. Wow. And I'm not going to lie, I was terrified the whole time. I was very sad, um, giving my dog back to my parents and all these things. But the moment I showed up the second day was when I met one of my key teachers, Erica Johansson. If you're in Ubud, please find her. She's amazing. Um, She teaches subconscious reprogramming. 
mm, which wow. was something I needed a lot of at yeah. that time. <laughs> right, right, right. right. Wow. Yeah. So you just followed your intuition to mm-hmm. Bali, and mm-hmm. uh, what what un, you know unfolded from there? Well, I think when you really draw a line in the sand, and your parents think you're absolutely insane, <laughs> <laughs> you just go for it. Right. And I was just like, I'm here to be completely open to what is, mm-hmm. and. What a playground to play in in Bali, and um, I got to explore a lot of different modalities, and was going through a lot of my personal healing. Yeah. And from there, what you learn, you want to share. Mm-hmm. So I started offering that too. It was right. very fulfilling. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. So tell me about um, His Royal Highness. How you ended up working? Chalk. Oh, yeah. yeah, Chalk's the best. If you're in Bali, please go see him. He does alchemical homeopathy, and um, I went to him as a client. Mm-hmm. And I think we just had a wonderful connection. I love the way that he worked. It was not only intuitive, but analytical, which satisfied satisfied that part of my brain. Sure. And I just asked him, I was like, hey, do you need like an apprentice or someone to help you out? And he was so open. And what ended up happening was I would just sit in his practitioner's room every day watching him see clients. And over time, as trust built. It was just, I learned so much. Wow. Yeah. I'm so fortunate because in the States, you know, with privacy, you can't right. really do that with practitioners. Right, right, right. <laughs> totally. So what yeah. was what did the practice entail that I mean what what you know, you you mm-hmm. just what did you say it, it, it was that he did? Um he was trained as a homeopath, it? but yeah. I would say it's more alchemical because the moment you walk in, he's already reading your energy and he's seducing what remedy fits what it is that you want to solve and it's about the interaction and interplay of two energies together that starts the healing process, mm-hmm. not just the imbibing of the medicine, I think. Right, right, right. And I really saw how intentional he was. And So it's almost like a medical intuitive? He absolutely is. Absolutely. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Wow. And then from that, um, I think because you're in this environment of learning and seeing so many different case studies of people and what they're working through, you start sensing patterns. Mm-hmm. Right. And that was really fascinating for me to observe. Right, right, yeah. right. Cool. How long did you study, uh, sort of work with him? Mm-hmm. Um, that's a good question. I think I was in Bali almost two years on and off, probably a year and a half in total. But beginning of, I guess, this year or December, perhaps. I don't know, let me think. November of last year. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm-hmm. So how do you, you know, so, so you sort of had this interesting mix of you know walking in the business world you know google i mean you couldn't work for a more more iconic company uh-huh. and then going and working with an energy healer who's royalty in bali mm-hmm. um like wow that's like two very diverse things so you are on a mission to sort of take those experiences i mean what i've seen with my own life is everything that i ever went through led to, to a tool that i needed for what i was going to do next Absolutely. you know i could look back in hindsight sometimes and be like i remember at times being like why am i doing this what is this for and then looking back years later and being like oh that's why i was supposed to be there that weird job doing this thing that i learned <laughs> that i otherwise would have never learned that led to this and this and this yeah so you are um relatively new on your journey Right. Of helping um, entrepreneurs and uh, like spiritual centric folks to like, you know, ground in their entrepreneurial uh, prowess, if you will. So Mm -hmm. do you want to share what that process is like for you and, you know, what your what what your plan is there? Yeah. So I'm really excited to basically I feel like one of my strongest strengths is condensing a lot of information into a very clear way for other people to absorb. Mm. And I've had the opportunity and privilege of absorbing a lot of information in very diverse fields for the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. And I feel almost like an obligation and definitely a genuine want to share that. So more specifically, I'm developing a program. It's going to be called the um, Mindful Business Academy, Mm. where entrepreneurship will be seen as a vehicle for spiritual growth. Because, it, as I mean, you've been an entrepreneur since you were 19. Oh, since I was like nine. Huh. Uh, since you were nine, right? Yeah. When you go- I started selling candy at school. <laughs> and then all the kids started copying, and then I got, like, shut down by the principal. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but um, once you go all in on something, and you're in this free fall of uncertainty, that's when, event- inevitably, you're hitting all the things that you have to transmit within yourself. And one of my favorite parts of this is... Um, Seeing what it is in terms of blocks in your business, Mm -hmm. perceived obstacles, as a means for self-development. Because it's simply signifying to you what needs to be looked at within. Ooh, 
Yeah. And I think that's fun. Which makes a lot of sense. I mean, it's all reflections, right? But most mm-hmm. of the time people sort of separate out business from that mm-hmm. sort of that perspective is one that's so prolific and, you know, that sort of transformational community, if you will. Mm-hmm. But you start thinking about business and then it's like, oh, no, OK, we're just dealing with the business issue and this has nothing to do with who I am or where I'm at necessarily. So I think that's a, a very interesting point to, to bring up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Approaching entrepreneurship as a vehicle for spiritual growth mm-hmm. because it is. And um, well, everything is everything in life is. But the way that we've approached business needs to be updated. It's not just about having the latest strategy or having the right, I don't know, framework or tools. It's about what is it, what frequency are you emitting and how is that inspiring your action taking in order to get you what you want? Right. So this is the be do have model. Yeah. Rather than I have the car and the spouse, now I feel like I'm quite confident and I'm going to be a success. Right, 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 right. right. (laughs) backwards. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and what I feel strongly about is that for, uh, especially as the world continues to sort of wake up more and um, I think we're shifting into a new era on our planet uh, where now more than ever, Mm -hmm. your intention is going to be reflected back to you really quickly like you know i feel like in the past you could go back in the past and it's like oh go back 50 years or 100 years or whatever and it's like we were in a cycle as humanity where it's like okay we're supposed to experience separation from source and Mm -hmm. so you could maybe get away with a lot more because the the karmic repercussions are felt over a much longer period of time like oh okay they can get away with doing this horrible thing for 50 years but they're going to feel in their next life Uh uh-huh Whereas now, I think there's this quickening happening where what you're putting out is being mirrored back to you and reflected back to you quicker and quicker and quicker. So I think your intention is more important now than ever to, uh, to, you know, if you want to know what kind of results you're going to get from whatever, you know, um, sort of path you're pursuing Mm -hmm. career wise, entrepreneurially, whatever, in anything, Mm -hmm. if, you know, I always say, especially now more than ever, if you want to understand what the results are going to be, look at what the intention is behind it. Like you can't trick the universe with your intentions. You can't, you can't outsmart or pull one over on, you know, you're just, you know, you better get in alignment with your intentions. If you want to see something really beautiful out the other side, I believe. Absolutely. I think the days of having a hidden agenda are slowly dying because either you evolve or you suffer. Right. And you learn from the suffering. (laughs) Right, 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 right. And, and a great example of, um, hiding you know is you know it's being reflected in our media and you know with the you know me too movement and the fact that everything we're saying is being recorded now and Mm -hmm. you know these are all reflections of you know okay like there's no more hiding in the shadows kind of thing like the Mm -hmm. light is being turned on you Mm -hmm. can't really you know and what is the light i love the values of transparency Mm -hmm. which you see in things like blockchain which is amazing i'm such a nerd over that yeah it's amazing (laughs) Um, But also, I think a feminine way of doing business. What do I mean by that? Using our intuition and our feelings to guide us. And also knowing when to just let go and not be so attached to something. Allowing the how to just surprise you. I I say that all the time. It's like, you can have, you know, a lot of people are like, expectations are the enemy. I don't believe that. I believe expectations are a part of life. Mm -hmm. You can set expectations Mm -hmm. with a healthy sense of detachment. So, okay, I have, based off all the information and my feelings at this moment, subject to change at any time, Mm -hmm. I'm expecting it to go down like this and Mm -hmm. to, you know, I'm pursuing this path. Mm -hmm. And I release all of that knowing this or something better. Yes. You know, I'm doing a (laughs) dance with my higher self who Uh sometimes is taking the wheel as they should. And, you know, I'm I'm here for the ride. I'm going to follow my highest excitement. Mm -hmm. And so that's sort of the the formula that's worked really well for me. I set set a goal, I set an expectation, and then like, okay and if that unfolds great and if it doesn't i'm just going to be there taking everything as feedback that mm-hmm. is coming to me mm-hmm. to, to point me in the direction of what i should you know yeah what rock i should turn over next absolutely and it's messy and it's painful at times but i really think it is like the battle dojo of um spiritual growth mm. because we're not here just to have things be smooth all the time <laughs> So I love that. I always say with grace and ease, please, and gentleness, but you never right, know. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, it's like, have you heard the Alan Watts um, talk where he talked about, you know, imagine you, you know, are a spiritual being and you decided you wanted to experience a realm where, you know, you could do all these things in physical reality. And so you'd come down and you'd have like all the... F- 
you know, every, the best of everything that you could ever want. And, you know, and you, and you experience that to the fullest and then you sort of get bored with it and you say, OK, you know, now I want to experience not fully knowing and, you know, a little more adventure with it. And mm-hmm. he's like, and he, he, I mean, I'm summarizing it. He goes through this whole like five minute, you know, oh. sort of uh, explanation he goes. And that's how you ended up where you are right now, you know, and I think it's like a really cool way to, to imagine, you know, I, I often um, will ponder, you know, whenever I'm dealing with anything in my life, a challenge or anything that's coming up, I'll think, hmm, what would big Brandon do? You know, what would higher self, because it's like, I know you and I know what you think like to a certain, to a definite degree, mm-hmm. like, okay, like if some mischievous, like clever kooky thing is happening some weird synchronicity whatever I'm like yeah of course I would do that you know Mm -hmm. and that's kind of how I think of it and I find it as a fun way to kind of do this dance with my higher self I like that I found for me my process is I usually need time to slow down the velocity of however I am being Mm -hmm. this is probably a lower frequency that I'm being Mm -hmm. and then um then like you say zooming out Mm -hmm. but of course there are things like going home with your family that brings up all the triggers Mm -hmm. (laughs) and that's when it's like you think you're enlightened to spend a week with your family Ram Dass said (laughs) I mean absolute truth (laughs) total total truth Mm -hmm. no one can trigger me like my mom or my brother probably you know mm -hmm. like they're the best (laughs) and you chose them right (laughs) they're so good at it oh man Um, so do you see the world of spirituality and business being bridged together more and more I mean from your perspective absolutely I think that is the very near future we also see the nature of work changing more so than ever before people are working for themselves Mm. and they're doing what they absolutely love to do yeah and I think that's no accident Um, as we get more and more sovereign in our way of being in life we're going to want to be the ones that provide our livelihood in the ways that we want it. And that's a very roundabout way of saying, live life on your terms. Yes. Yeah. And spiritual principles that have been, you know, it's in quantum physics, it's in universal laws of the world, um, applies to business as well. Absolutely. But that, I, I find that there's a bit more um, lagging of change in that overall industry. And so what I've been really interested in talking about is, again, this like new feminine way of doing business where you are being receptive and emitting the energy that you want to attract Mm -hmm. and more so this like notion of surrender. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes you just have to not care so much in order to get the thing that you want. And that sounds completely backwards. I I so agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like I think of the, have you ever seen this? There's a great meme with Bob Marley laughing. Mm -hmm. Someone took it and turned it into a meme. It's like him laughing, cracking up and goes, when you know, when you finally realize you can have everything you want when you don't no longer need it, you know, and it's kind of like the the mind blowing, like, oh, Mm -hmm. that's been the problem. I'm trying too hard. I'm chasing, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But how do you then stop doing that if you want something so badly? That's the question. Yeah. And for me, it's like, okay, I've got based off of my insight on who I am and where I'm at and, um, you know, the, the ultimate nature of reality is, you know, based off of understanding all that is like, okay, I'm going to have my idea of what I should or shouldn't be doing. And then I'm just going to release it. And if it, if it doesn't unfold, if it doesn't fall great, I was spot on with what's in my best and highest. If it doesn't, Mm -hmm. then, um, I trust that, you know, what's for me will always be for me and then I'll always get what I need and that, you know, a master is someone who, who always embraces what shows up because they understand it's exactly what they need. Mm. And so you really are getting into this dance of like co-creation. Like sometimes I'm spot on with what I thought, the way I thought it would go and other times I'm completely off. Mm. Or that step that I thought was my end all was really just the beginning to lead me to something else, to lead me something else. Mm -hmm. And so you start to realize, okay, the more I know, the more I realize I don't know to some degree. And I'm just going to learn. It's like, you know, what all the the religions talked about faith, faith, you know, it's like, it's the same, it's, it's faith. It's understanding that there's, there's a, a, an extension of you, a, you know, higher self, source, the universe, whatever you want to call it. That is uh, an intricate part of this, this dance that we're doing. And so, you know, that for me has really served me well. I can't, I may be uh, ruffled for a moment about something or two, but I can't, it can't last long because I say, Oh, okay. Well, that's <laughs> how it, you know, why is this happening for me is always the question, you yes, know? Yes, yes. That's what gets us out of the victim mentality. 
Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. I love what Matt Kahn's saying these days with his Angel Academy. He's like, angels are basically victims who have realized that they don't have to give their power away anymore. Mm. And I love that because it's not certain people are special and they're angelic. No, it's like you have the capacity within yourself any moment to anchor in the light, so to speak. <laughs> right, right. Any At any given time, any mm-hmm. given moment, it's like mm-hmm. choosing to take your power. So many people feel disempowered, you know, and have told stories of victimhood mm-hmm. around and you know, my friend Chris talks about this a lot. He's like, "Look, it's, it's, it. If you can start making it not personal, like whatever happened, it's just like if I smack you in the face, it, it could be okay. <laughs> this stingy thing happened on my face right now, <laughs> or this person hates me, and you know, all of the story around it, and they mm-hmm. dishonored me, and you know, mm-hmm. it's like so. You can look at it very, you know, if you start looking at things as like an event in a happening that." you know transpired Mm -hmm. it versus like making it like this all this emotional energy around it yeah and i know that's challenging easier said than done when something's been very emotionally you know um triggering and huge Mm -hmm. you know traumatic type events Mm -hmm. but um i think um it's 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 the path to understand you know okay it it was there to to sort of you know smooth seas never made for a skilled sailor i am Mm, you know here to like sharpen my axe and you know, it's like Rumi said, how will, how will your mirror be polished if you're annoyed by every rub, you know? And <laughs> so, you know, that's the uh-huh. dance we signed up for. We might as well do it as gracefully as possible. Yeah. And I would also add to that, um, honoring our feelings when they come up, even if they seem irrational or like something that's inconvenient. Yeah. Because, I mean, we're highly rational beings and sometimes the way we're reacting doesn't really quite make sense. And I think healing, ultimately, I've learned, is a feeling. Mm. And the biggest part in my healing journey myself is allowing myself to feel. Yeah. And that's huge yeah. more so than yeah. Said. Pro- process the emotions and mm-hmm. yeah. And, and not judging yourself for them when you yeah. have maybe a reaction that you'd rather you didn't hadn't, you exactly. know? Exactly. Yeah. And also not trying to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's uh-huh. a tricky one for, for people like us. <laughs> Certainly for me. Why? Why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always. I was, I'm sure it's a little kid that would like, why? It was like for two years straight. Why? 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 You I'm know? in trouble for asking too many questions a yeah. lot, so I yeah. can relate to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> totally. Why? Curiosity. My goodness. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, one of the things I think is interesting about your story is how you're, as you sort of um, started going down this path of self-growth, your uh, intuition really blossomed and it's mm. pretty, pretty powerful from what I've seen you sort of demonstrate and what you shared with me. Um, do you want to share a little bit about that? Yeah. So firstly, I just want to say that everyone has the capacity to develop their intuition. Mm-hmm. People who are quote unquote psychic, clairvoyant, whatnot, they're not more special than other people. Mm-hmm. And that's when we can kind of assuage the ego and allow the softening that needs to take place for it to emerge. Because in the beginning, at least for my experience, it's a whisper. Yeah. It's a knowing without knowing why you know. It's a seeing without knowing where it came from. Some people hear things. Other people physically in their body feel certain things. I would say um, if you have- I get chills sometimes. Truth chills. Nice. Cool. Um, If you have ever felt like you're someone who's too sensitive for your environment- or have seen your sensitivity as a weakness, I would actually encourage you to reframe that. It is an absolute asset in life mm-hmm. to be sensitive because you're open to things that other people may not be able to perceive, whether that be the beauty of nature, whether that be the energy in your room, whether that be spirits that want to work through you or communicate with you. I would say number one would be safety and allowing of something that is not understood or scientifically studied to simply be so Mm. we're allowing space for that i would say is the first step Mm -hmm. and then from there um i've had i mean being in bali and being around other a lot of psychic beings you play a lot of games that cultivate your psychic skills and some of my favorite games are like we're you know driving in a car and you're starting to broadcast out through the top of your head a number or a color and everyone else has to guess Mm. things like that just Mm -hmm. to train your like first instinct and to pay attention to that i think are fun fun things you can do um, Jung actually said, he was a psychologist, that intuition is a skill that you can cultivate. And I very much believe that. And whatever you put your attention to expands. So I think I simply put my attention to wanting to develop the skill, mm. which is <clears throat> such contrast to my very analytical academic background. So right. 
to me, it was like, wow, I feel very uncomfortable in this like new field, but it was actually coming back home to what I'd suppressed right. early on, thinking right. that it was a weakness. Right, yeah. right, right. How do your parents feel about it now? I know you were saying when you first like yeah. departed from Google <laughs> land. <laughs> yeah, I would say they do not agree with the choices that I've made, mm-hmm. and I absolutely still love them, Yeah, and that's okay. Perfect. And I have a lot of compassion because... My parents fled the communist revolution in China right. to come here as like poor graduate students in school, trying to make it work. And yeah. the opportunities that I have are unprecedented in terms of both sides of my ancestry. And from that, I feel like I really want to make the most of it in terms of sharing what I'm learning. Yeah. And I'm internally a student still. Yeah, mm. aren't we all? We, yeah. I always say we teach best what we most need to learn. Mm. And... Um, Hey. So I do a lot of teaching. <laughs> um, so intuition is interesting because, you know, I had someone actually reach out the other day with an email, I think it was, and ask about, you know, understanding the difference between intu- intuition and fear or, you know, uh, or mm-hmm. something like, oh, am I just being paranoid or intuition or intuition and, you know, imagination. I'm making this up. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious what your thoughts are on that. Well, the place I always like to go back to, which I feel like never fails, is our body. Mm -hmm. our bodily and its innate wisdom so if you're thinking about scenario and you're trying to discern if it's in your highest and best good Mm -hmm. are you feeling contracted in your physical body Mm. is that a sign from your limbic system trying to protect you from uncertainty and change or is it simply because it is not something for your highest good to take that a step further i really love um the modality of um muscle testing Mm -hmm. kinesiology applied kinesiology Mm -hmm. and some ways that you can muscle test yourself would be of course standing on your feet saying calibrating your yes and your no but for overthinkers like you and i i bypass that one so easily (laughs) yeah right so my favorite one is actually standing up both feet raising one of your knees and then with the opposite hand pushing it down Mm -hmm. and you calibrate so say your name my name is x press that that's your yes my name is pineapple that's your no and so it will basically the knee will move. You sit like Indian style kind of thing? I'm standing up. Oh, okay. So my knee won't be as easily pushed down when I say my name is Diana because that is oh, the truth. Okay, gotcha. So you'll, you'll kind of like lift your leg in the air kind of thing. And, yeah. Okay. But opposite hand to knee. Okay, gotcha. And the reason we do this is just so you can feel into what your yes and your no is. Mm-hmm. And you could apply this to your everyday life. Even when you're grocery shopping, you hold the item up to your body. And mm-hmm. I'd never heard of doing it to yourself quite like that. I mean, I know yeah. with two fingers on the wrist, you know, I oh, did yeah. that before. There's like a bunch of yeah, different but ways. I've really discovered a way that my brain can't overthink it. <laughs> gotcha, cool. Yeah, I'll have to try that one. Mm-hmm. And I love it when you apply to limiting beliefs that you may or may not know that you have. Mm. So perhaps you have the belief that life isn't easy. That's mm. a really good one to cancel and delete. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> or that I don't know what I'm doing, or that I'm not good enough, or that I'm not lovable. Um, because your external reality is extracting that belief. Right. And there are multiple modalities that help you reprogram NLP, EFT to some degree. I love theta healing. It brings your brain back into the way it was as a baby, Hmm. theta brainwave. And you go straight to source and you simply ask for, it's a process, but um, the clearing of energy so that you can replace it with the new. And then you muscle test at the end to see if your body has accepted that. Hmm, Which I think is just an extension of your, of your subconscious. Right, right, right. Yeah. Cool. Joe Dispenza talks about that a lot. Gotcha, gotcha, mm-hmm. gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's definitely familiar with Joe's work. He actually, one of, um, one of his right-hand women who worked closely with him is here at the Mystic Manor pretty regularly. Um, yeah, <laughs> I like to I like to use the woman. Um uh-huh. Uh, you know, doing workshops with our guests and everything like that. So, um, yeah, he's fun. he's amazing. Yeah, I love how he just, uh, you know, he pulls in all the scientific aspect of mm-hmm. this work. I love the dance that science and spirituality is doing currently. You know, yeah. it's like, yeah, it's I so fascinating. So. Joe actually says science is the modern language for mysticism. Mm. And his approach is so, not opposite, but different from, say, Osho, mm-hmm. where he was all about surpassing the mind, going straight to the body, and Joe's like, nope, your mind can control everything. It's a supercomputer. Yep, yeah, right, 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 <laughs> right, right, right. So different access points for people. So you you're saying for intuition, like using muscle testing is a great way. If like I'm unsure if this is just me being fearful versus you know this is actual like hey don't get in that car because mm-hmm. you know 
you yeah. should avoid getting in a wreck. <laughs> right. Well, I think the basis of sustainable intuition is self-awareness. Mm-hmm. So knowing when you are going back into your survival patterns versus... And another person asked me, what's the difference between your imagination and intuition? Which is a great question, because how do you know if you're imagining something? Else? Right, right. And I would say um, instinct. Mm. Honestly, you know that you know that you know the sun's going to rise tomorrow on the horizon. Mm-hmm. How do you know that? You just do. Mm-hmm. Comparing what it is that you want to know, comparison relative to that knowing, will probably help you discern, wow, okay, I'm a bit shaky about this. I'm not sure. Um, I personally love the idea, again, of the expansion versus contraction, is the thought of this making me feel safe and expansive, or am I really just going inward and trying to protect myself? Right, right, yeah. right, right. Um, cool. Well, so to, to kind of circle back to the, the work environment and, you know, spirituality and business, uh, I'm curious, you know, what do you think? Okay, so we, we kind of agreed, like, you know, the world is obviously having this sort of spiritual awakening, mm-hmm. more and more people in business. So, I mean, I know I'm seeing it all the time. People who are very business minded now all of a sudden like keenly, you know, interested in all the the transformational work and self, mm-hmm. you know, development. What do you, where do you think this is going to go? Well, I mean, what do you see the future of work being like? Yeah, I think as corporations realize that people have alternatives and they're figuring out alternative ways to make money, they are going to invest more and more into employee well-being. Mm-hmm. And that's going to hit mental and emotional well-being. And I'm seeing the trend with meditation right now. But ultimately, what I love is for people to be self-empowered into like a habitual daily practice. But to answer your question farther, where do I see this going? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Yeah. What, what do you think? I mean, like, what do you think the workplace is going to look like 20 years from now? Is everyone going to be entrepreneurs working for themselves? Or is everyone, like, sort of telecommuting? Like, what do you, hmm. what do you, what do you think? Well, my intuition is telling me that, honestly, I don't know if everyone's cut out to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. Because there's a certain level of risk tolerance that you have to have innately. For sure. There's a huge level of scrappiness. Mm, <laughs> huge. And um, you have to prioritize uncertainty over certainty. Mm -hmm. So I don't see a world where everyone's an entrepreneur yet in my lifetime. I could be wrong, absolutely. Yeah. That being said, I do see people being more open. Yeah, being more open to living a life that is a reflection of who they really are, because the dissatisfaction has gone to a level that is probably unbearable. Yeah. And whether that be exploring things in your hobby or listening to your podcast, you know that appetite is only going to increase. Yeah. And among CEOs of the world who are leaders in the business world, they already know on some level that their innate energy is affecting their entire company and organization. Right. And as people who got there because they're open to personal development, their natural innate student within them wants that extra edge. Mm-hmm. And this is like the new frontier, you know, metaphysics and things like that. Um, I just see, again, growth. Yeah. So I'm bullish on that to use financial terms. <laughs> right, right, right. No, I'm, I'm with you on that. Mm-hmm. Um, if you had like one big, you know, offering, one big thought you wanted to share with the the P heads out there, what is you know, it's something that I, I've I'm been asking lately. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, what is like the topic in general for you that's bubbling up um, the most right now? It's like a um, growth edge or a share that you think would be beneficial for for mm-hmm. people to yeah. hear and consider? Well, I would say, well, there's something we could even do right now if you'd like in terms of um, a place that I could guide them into more of a theta brainwave. Is cool. That you want to do? Yeah, sounds great. But I would say the secret release an idea that we can manifest anything that we want, but I do feel like it was missing a huge chunk. Mm. which is are you in the field of pure possibility or in the void before you anchor in that seed and are you then releasing the attachment to it can you say that one more time so the secret's like i really want a red car okay Mm -hmm. but as deepak chopra's highlighted are you first bringing yourself into that void when you are meditating you feel like you're in this field of infinite possibility Mm -hmm. before you then plant in that intention right 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 it's like is there fertile soil before you put in the seed right and then allow the seed time to grow it on its own accord right so there's a before and after part yeah 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 um if there's one thing that i can't stress enough that i'm reminding myself every day it's awareness how am i showing up is this the way that i want to be showing up um what is it that i truly want and where is that coming from and what is driving that desire 
And what is it that I need to remember?、Mm -hmm. Because the innate wisdom is something that inquiry can bring us back more deeply into. Right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Love that. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I think、um, getting in this in the right vibrational state. You know, it's why I like doing the podcast. So many people are always like, How do you do so many? And it's like, Well, I'm putting myself into a vibrational state every time、mm. that I'm going down this path, you know, and that、mm. is fertile ground for attracting, you know, more、uh, experiences that are reflective of this energy. Yeah. And so、mm -hmm. I couldn't agree with you more on that. Yeah. And on top of that, the thing that I want more in my life is for ways for me to be more aware of my blind spots. Yeah. Because there are things I don't know that I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think that's one of the biggest things is when you're really on this path is,、um, is understanding that you have work to do still and being willing to self examine.、Mm -hmm. You know, to me, that's the most redeeming quality、mm -hmm. a person can have because、mm -hmm. I can see, you know, I can, people can have a lot of things that maybe rub me wrong or whatever, but if they're willing to self examine、mm -hmm. and they want to do、mm -hmm. the, the work, That's like the ultimate redeeming quality. It's like、Absolutely. you can only be so like irritated by someone who's like, okay, yeah, I realized I was out of alignment there, or,、mm -hmm. you know, I behaved poorly or whatever, and、mm -hmm. I'm working on this or that. It's like,、mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, that's my favorite quote, actually. The unexamined life is not worth living. Ooh. Socrates. Ooh. Classic. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, I love that. I love it. I love it. Well,、yeah. one of the things that I love to hear on the show is. You know, any stories of synchronicity or serendipity or a positive paranormal story? I mean,、um, story or stories. I, I just love to get any sort of like, you know. The weird stuff. All right. Yeah, the weird stuff. <laughs> Well, the thing with weird stuff is that the first word usually is it's indescribable.、Mm -hmm. <laughs> True. However, we can do our best with language.、Um, you know, gosh, stories that are paranormal. You know, for me, I, I really personally love my dream time because、mm -hmm. I get a lot of、um, visions,、mm. whether they be faces or places or sometimes just like vivid colors.、Mm -hmm. And I make sure I pay attention to that. I think Jung popularized this as a way to know your unconscious. And for people who don't remember their dreams, if you just start having a dream journal, you will cultivate that awareness because it's where you're putting your attention. And there are people who are more expert at this who can speak more. But、um, I, I can't really think of one off the bat other than that one where it's like, you need to go to Bali. And I'm like, okay. And I bought a one way ticket and that and was it. And it just led you、yeah. to hanging with royalty. <laughs> well, more than that, meeting extraordinary human beings. I've met so many teachers there Mara Samada, Amarea, Erica Johansson. But it was about leaping and fully seeing how the universe was like, wow, she's committed, let's show up. Yeah. And、um, the idea of going to a foreign country and not knowing what your plan is is really not that scary for me anymore because I've done it. <laughs> yeah. So the payoff is huge, taking that leap of faith. Right. And that's something that all entrepreneurs have to do. Right. Yeah. Going right, all right. in on something. Right. Mm hmm. Cool. Well,、um, so. With your, your new program to, to work with entrepreneurs, do you, would you care to share a little bit more about what you'll be? Yeah. Yeah, what will be going on with that? Yeah. So, the intention behind that really is of service to provide support. And what I wanted in my journey was a hand, like a very high touch, hands on, let me walk you step by step into the fundamentals because I wanted to have some structure in which to play within. I think creativity and freedom is wonderful, but just some structure allows that to be even more beautiful. I found. And so it'll be an eight week group coaching program where there'll be a community of entrepreneurs. I'm capping it at 25 people for the first time because、mm -hmm. I want it to be very intimate.、Mm -hmm. And together we'll be co creating every week. There'll be a group call, there will be accountability, there will be very specific modules every week that builds upon the week before. So、mm -hmm. whether it be how do you attract your audience, how do you monetize, what's your pricing strategy, how do you even describe what it is that you do? That's a big one that I see. And one of the main things I see、um, entrepreneurs get tripped up on in the beginning is wow, I need a really epic website.、Mm -hmm. It's completely not true.、Yeah. I believe in the lean startup, lean startup mentality where it's about how can I be of service because what you give out is what you're going to attract. Right. Yeah. Right. And so if revenue is the main focus,、um, it's also just more sustainable over time. So it's about money. 
which ultimately I think is a good way of self-development because it's shining a light on the areas in our life we're feeling disempowered by. Yeah. Yeah. And then from there, having, you know, the skill sets of like the strategy, but doing it in a intuitive feminine way. That doesn't mean it's for women only because men have feminine energy within themselves too. Right. Within the masculine structure of um, a framework. Right. Yeah. Cool. Um, well, that's exciting for you, I know, to be sort of stepping into that yeah. realm. And that's one of the reasons, you know, when I heard that, um, I was like, you know what? You're here. We should we should bring you on and let the world yeah. know about it. Thank because, you so much. Yeah. yeah. I really appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. It's been, it's been um, epic to connect. Is there anything that you can think of that you would like to share that you haven't shared? Um, any question you want to ask me? Yeah. I have so many questions for you. But oh, first, I feel you're like... You're flipping be- the mic on me, huh? <laughs> I think it'd be nice to drop in within to ourselves, actually, mm-hmm. if you're open to an exercise. Yeah, I'd love an exercise. And if you're driving, please don't do this. But <laughs> <laughs> just closing your eyes and centering your attention and intention into the middle of your heart. Breathing into your heart, just noticing your heartbeat. How fast is it beating? Can you feel it? Can you hear it? Just noticing that sensation, this felt sense in your body. And allowing your awareness to go down your solar plexus, your sacral, your root all the way down into the earth, down through all the layers of the earth. Allow yourself to travel with your awareness deeper and deeper into the earth until you reach the very core. And pulling that earth energy up with your intention, up through all the layers, up and up and up, up through the surface, visualizing this. Go into your root, your sacral, your solar plexus, your heart, your throat, your third eye, and out the top of your head. You can see, sense, or feel yourself as this orb of light above your head. You can bring a color to that if you'd like. And just send that higher and higher, traveling out of this room, out through this atmosphere, keep going higher and higher, faster and faster, up through bright lights and dark lights, bright lights and dark lights, keep going until you see an expanse of golden light, allowing yourself to go through that expanse of golden light until you come upon an expanse of pink light, allowing yourself to go through that. Now we're going to go through an expanse of rainbow colored lights. If you see any people or objects, just keep zooming past them. Keep going higher and higher. You're feeling the sense of expansion as you go higher and higher with your awareness. And now we're going to go go through an expanse of deep blue light with a doorway, seeing and sensing clearly what that doorway looks like and allowing yourself to go through that doorway to the other side where there's only clear bright white light, this pearlescent white light that feels like home, the seventh plane. And as you go deeper and deeper into the white light becomes all that you can see, sense, and feel all around you, knowing and trusting this bright white light. Now allowing this orb of light that you are to dissolve and you're merging with this plane, really feeling the sense of expansion. You're one with the cosmos. Keep going. You're one with this white plane of light. And from this perspective, allowing yourself from this vantage point, staying here to look back on your life on earth and your first instinct, what is it that I want more than anything else? Noticing your answer to that. What am I most afraid of? Noticing your answer to that. The whisper of your heart. Now knowing all of this, what is it that I need to remember? What is it that you need to remember? Now that you've remembered this, what is it that I am committed to? What am I fully committed all in to? With that newfound wisdom, you're going to just take your time to come back down through that doorway, down through the deep blue light, down through that expanse of pink light, traveling faster and faster down through the expanse of golden light, down through the dark lights and bright lights, all the way back into this Earth's atmosphere, back into this room, entering into the top of your head, down your third eye, your throat, your heart, your solar plexus, sacral root, and feeling these tree roots go down deep into the Earth, this deep grounding, all the way to the core of the Earth. Now pulling that Earth energy up, up through all the layers, up through the surface into root, the sacral, solar, heart, throat, third eye, anchoring it at your crown. You can open your eyes when you're done. So, Voila! How was that for you? Wonderful. That was <laughs> short, sweet, and beautiful. 
Yeah, I'm sure you do that all the time. <laughs> yeah, not quite that exact thing, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, very cool. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. Aww. Did you have any insights that came up for you with those questions? Um, you know, um, I think, I don't know if I had any new um, insights other than sort of like confirmations of things, you know? Great. It just felt yeah. like more like, uh, more like um, putting a stamp on something, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, which is always validation is always helpful, right? Mm -hmm. When you're making so many decisions and mm -hmm. moving so fast in this mm -hmm. 3D circus that we all juggle in. Yeah, and some of us actually remember times when we had instant manifestations. So there might be a bit of a lag in this reality mm -hmm. of how fast things can take place. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Although I feel like the lag is maybe shortening, as we sort of talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. Like I think. You know, we're, we're speeding up, and so it's like you, you've sort of been in a practice zone uh, as, a, as a being, and as we sort of continue to level up, the, the stakes are higher, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, um, but the so, rewards are greater, right, too. Right, right. And I love this mentality of how do I play to win rather mm -hmm. than playing to not lose? Mm. And what does that feel like? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because you can't really lose. You, no. It ain't over till you win. Losing so. is an illusion. It you is. Are all, you are always winning. <laughs> always winning. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful to know? Uh -huh. All of you out there who think that you've just gotten it wrong so many times and it's too late for me and all that story that is really just based on, you know, uh, incorrect perception. <laughs> right. If anything, you're more equipped because of those quote unquote failures to yep. be a success, whatever that means now. Yep. Yep. Like you've paid your dues. It's the true hero's journey, I yep. think. Yeah. Which we're all here to do. It's like, I think it was um, David Wilcock who wrote the book talking about the hero's journey and how, you know, if, if you notice every story, it's the hero's journey, every famous movie, every, because that is the hero, that is the journey of mankind, you yeah. know? Joseph Campbell. And Joseph Campbell wrote the book and yeah. then he wrote a book. I think what, what did he write a book that like um, outlined all the different times and places that it had happened something like that i have to mm -hmm. i should have looked it up but um yeah he did something all we were kind of expanding on it even mm -hmm. joseph campbell of course is originally the hero of a thousand faces mm -hmm. is that what it is mm -hmm. okay yeah let's check it out yeah yeah huh. so i have a question for you actually sure what is it that you're most curious about these days hmm. what am i most curious about um you know i'm most curious about um uh, more epic manifestations. Okay. Um, you know, I've seen some cool magic in the last week and heard some stories that are like, you know, yeah. incredible stories of magic. <laughs> and it's just like, ooh, I'm really curious about, I've always been really good at manifesting magic, but really curious about upping that, you know, mm -hmm. taking that to, um, you know, another level. So yeah. honestly, that's what in the very recent term okay. sort of bubbles up for me amazing i love that story of um when you caught that card king of hearts it's oh, like a yeah, reminder yeah. of this yeah, is yeah. who you are yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it was cool <laughs> it was really cool yeah I, I talked about this the other day on the podcast actually oh okay yeah um a magician that like you know basically told me to think of a card and then pulled it and said is this a card and i'm like okay i didn't like take it and put it in the deck mm -hmm. or anything and then mm -hmm. days later he's at the house and throws a card across the backyard it lands in a spider web right under my feet <laughs> and with the same card again and he was yeah. just like i don't even think he wasn't trying to do a trick he was just like throwing cards like mm -hmm. and so it was like a great example of like yeah 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 magic yeah. even jumping up to mm -hmm. it's like even the magician is doing magic unintended you know yeah. like what yeah <laughs> A guy who does unbelievable magic. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I would say I'm also curious about that. Ways that I can get more, even more in touch with my guides yeah. and to really surrender and say, "All right, I'm here. I'm fully committed to playing in this play playground. Mm -hmm. Let's make it interesting and fun. Yep. And I'm calling in lots of ease and grace, and it doesn't have to be hard or difficult or painful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's why I love hearing stories from people. I always ask mm -hmm. a story, you know, mm -hmm. just because the stories ins inspire, mm -hmm. like, oh, wow, that's possible. Oh, wow, you yeah, know. Yeah. And so um, I think the more we are exposed to something, the more it's like becomes a part of our, you know, mm -hmm. our understanding of what is or isn't possible. And sure. therefore, it helps us to sort of like yeah. level up. Yeah. Well, I could share a story that to me was a bit of a miracle. Oh, um, okay. So. Twist my arm. <laughs> 
I mean, for me at least. So when I was in New York, um, I met my co-founder who's a data scientist. We develop an algorithm. Long story short, you had to raise capital in order to build and finish a product. Classic story. Um, create the pitch deck. I was practicing how to pitch to VCs, and it's like this whole thing that you're trying to be perfect about and feeling very awkward in. And lo and behold, one day I'm sitting in a coffee shop, and there's this guy in the corner. He looks completely nondescript in this hoodie, and he's feeling kind of antisocial. Mm-hmm. And I just remember closing my eyes and like breathing because I was feeling stressed because things weren't manifesting as quickly as I would like. And then I made a little prayer. Um, Actually, it was more of a command. I think I was quite pissed at the moment. Uh I was like, I need a sign that this is going to work, and I need your support in order to bring this into the world. So show me. Uh It wasn't a prayer. It was a command. And uh, so, yeah, I encourage people to demand from the universe what it is that you want with Uh very clear, yeah, intention. And so I heard, like, not heard. I think I just felt I should talk to this guy. Uh I don't know why I don't really talk to people in coffee shops, especially Uh not in New York. You never know if someone's kind of grumpy. Yeah, right. (laughs) And it was the best conversation. He ended up being our angel investor. Wow. And it was such a lovely, dear soul. And at the end, he was like, thank you so much for just saying hi. Because, yeah, I wouldn't have talked to you Mm -hmm. (laughs) otherwise. Right, right, right. So you just never know. Wow. So you basically found your investor Mm -hmm. by walking up to a random guy in a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. and feeling inspired to talk to them. I was sitting diagonal from a table. Everyone's kind of working, being antisocial. And I was just like, hi, where are you working on? (laughs) Wow. Yeah. How cool is that? After I demanded that I wanted an outcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I was doing it the traditional way, which is why business is being redeveloped. Yeah. And I encourage people, if you feel a nudge, don't squash that. Listen to it. Yeah, yeah. What's the worst thing that could happen? You realize it wasn't true. What a powerful example of sort of pushing beyond your comfort zone Mm -hmm. in order to call in magic. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty incredible. Thank you. I mean, as someone who's, you know, raised money and that whole world is, I mean, it's, that's not an easy thing to do. No. And um, to find that by going up to a random person in a coffee shop (laughs) is pretty unlikely based off statistical probabilities, right? Yeah, close to zero. (laughs) Yeah. So uh, I would say that is a very magical, inspiring. And there you ended up coming through with an awesome story. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah. And I love, um, it's funny because Shaman Dirk is coming by the house today at the Mystic Manor later. Mm Mm-hmm. He's book release party as of the, the day we're recording this. Yep. Mm-hmm. And it's called, what is it called? A Spirit Hacking. Spirit Hacking. Yeah, I definitely highly recommend people checking it out, actually. Amazing. I read it briefly, little pages, mm-hmm. it, and it said, um, what's the first thing you say to yourself in the morning? Because what he encourages is for people to say, you are amazing. Mm-hmm. You're worthy of attracting what it is that you want. Yes. And it sounds so simple, but our subconscious is so, I don't know, it's neuroplasticity is really... I just love it. I love yeah, all of that. and a lot of people were telling the story about themselves of unworthiness and mm-hmm. not good enough, and I'm not like so and so, and I'm not like you know. And I always say, if you're seeing them in your world or connecting with them or any way they're reflecting back to you, that's because you're mm-hmm. such a close vibrational match out of eight billion possibilities on the planet of people you could be seeing or hearing yeah. or being reflected back to you. That energy is that close to you, so don't mm-hmm. look at it as comparison. Look at it as mm-hmm. you know, like it's not a competition. This is like no, you know, yeah. that's a, an, a, a that is an extension of you in some way. Absolutely, and I also just want to bring in the quick point of um, women in business and women in entrepreneurship because mm. research has shown that, and I think this was in the book Lean In by Sheryl Sandberg. I love her. Um, the for men, the more successful you are, your likability your likability is parallel to that. Mm-hmm. Whereas with women, it's kind of it's inverse mm. because of God knows the number of reasons. Yeah. And so, do we want to be liked and accepted and to belong more than we want to succeed and stick out and to be who we really are? Is a question to ask. Um, I would say for me, I have to constantly remind myself that there is an abundance of space. Mm. There's an abundance of space. So making yourself small does not give someone else more space. Yeah. That is a fallacy. And especially, I mean. Culturally, like I'm Chinese American, mm-hmm. it's not traditional for women to really take a leadership role. I would say, I mean, mm-hmm. uh, now is the time. Now is our time. The paradigm is shifting, and if not us, who? Who right, else? Right, right. And as pioneers, it's super terrifying because I don't have that many role models, um, and so you create what it is that you want. Yeah. And that's why I'm really passionate about this um, mindful business academy that I'm starting and also for other women out there to really step into their leadership positions if you so choose I think being a mom at home is 
so heroic in and of itself. <laughs> yeah. It's the hardest job in the world. <laughs> totally. And there are ways of also being an entrepreneur while being a stay-at-home mom when yeah. you go into digital products. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Totally. Mm -hmm. The world is a-changing. It is changing, yeah. yeah. And people who say that the future is female, I would say the future is a balance of the female and the male. Mm, I'm with that. Yeah. Yeah, we got to be careful never to swing too hard in, uh, against something because, you know, because something's been out of balance, let's not try and swing it too hard out of balance in a different direction. Exactly. You know? It's about less separation. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I, it's why I sometimes have trouble with, like, the cultural appropriation stuff. It's just oh. like, it's just like, it, it so creates so much more separate. I saw one, the other, Vice posted the other day, mm -hmm. thing, things like... You can't say the number one thing you can't say about because of you know Native American culture or something is something about a sp you can't you can't say that someone's your spirit animal or that was like considered cultural appropriation. Oh, yeah. I'm just thinking, oh, really? So you know, it's like it's just some of it just goes so far. It's like how do we create oneness like across mm -hmm. the board mm -hmm. and not draw these lines in the sand? And I understand there's been cultures that have been, you know. Um, mistreated and there's been you know a you know from women to to homosexuality to yes. different races to i mean there's been so much we can all acknowledge that you yeah. know but let's not try and create these hard lines in the sand to create like i can do this and you can't and i'm you know my ancestors invented this thing or this word or i don't know that one's a tricky one for me yeah. i don't it doesn't feel like it's yeah. it's leading back to what i want to see more of which is you know mm -hmm sharing and connecting yeah i absolutely agree with that and i would argue that um compassion would be probably the doorway for that mm -hmm. because i love the saying in truth that there's no one that you wouldn't fall in love with if you actually knew their story yeah because they're a reflection of your humanity yeah and so what i would love to call forth more in society which i feel like women have done a great job in be being it's a heart trait and men are also in their heart but you know, we're kind of bridging this thing for men and women mm -hmm. because it's an energy is um, qualities of the heart. Yeah. Compassion, empathy, acceptance, understanding. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. That'll do it. Which is why I love Moana, by yeah. the way. <laughs> Who just uh, told, was telling me how much they love Moana? Moana has so many great spiritual principles in it. It's yeah, just yeah, yeah. a brilliant film. Totally, totally. I think that was Coco, actually. Shout out, Coco. Yay. You're not the only one that loves Moana. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really good. Awesome. Oh, this has been really good, Diana. Thank you so much for coming by. What is the best way for people to connect with you that are interested in following you and your work and, you know, all, yeah. the, all the goodness you're, gonna, you're mm -hmm. launching into the world? Yeah, thank you for that question. Um, Instagram's a great platform, underscore Diana Gia, J-I-A, underscore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So beginning and end, underscore. Um, you could also find me on Facebook, Diana, last name J-I-A, or my website, dianaljia.com. And um, thank you so much for creating this podcast. I think it's been such a force of optimism and good and spreading of consciousness on this planet that's so needed. Hmm. So I just want to acknowledge and um, say thank you for that. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you for co-creating it with me on this fine occasion. And I do have one last question for you. Okay. And it is this. Okay. In 60 seconds or less, what okay. is the meaning of life according to Diana Gia? The meaning of life is how can I... Through this person, the situation or event or challenge or obstacle or gift, find ways to expand and love that. Hmm. Yes. Because it's, that's what the test is. How can I love even this? Whatever arises, love that, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, love you, Diana. You are such a joy, and uh, I so appreciate you and uh, all of you out there listening as well. Mm -hmm. uh, until next time, journey well. Love you so, so much. Yes. And if you're feeling the call to come for a week retreat style mystic manner immersion, remember to go now and book your time to speak with me directly about stepping into the optimistic vortex at calendly.com forward slash talk with Brandon while there are still spots left. Otherwise, I look forward to co-creating magic with you at the mystic manor.